Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a 10 team PPR mock draft from the second overall spot on Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. Inside today's video, we're going to be drafting up against the ESPN average draft position, so it's going to be a lot like we are drafting on ESPN inside of this video. The main point of this video is just going to be focusing in on my overall feel of the draft as it goes along, as well as focusing in on why I make each and every single selection inside of the the draft. But before we get on into this mock draft, I'd like to ask if you are new to the YouTube channel and you do end up enjoying today's video to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 fantasy football championship. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video. I would also like to let you guys know that my rankings are available for free on osmo.com as well as my articles that I write every single day and the link to those are down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment so without further ado let's get into the video again this is a 10 team PPR mock draft from the second overall spot drafting up against ESPN's average draft position the roster positions for this video are one quarterback two running backs two wide receivers one tight end one flex a kicker defense and six bench spots so without further ado let's get on into the mock draft so right now i can guarantee you that James Robinson is not going to get picked inside of the third or the fourth round. He will probably fall until the eighth round because the average draft position has yet to be able to catch up to that move. So my question is going to be right now, if you are drafting in a PPR league, where are you going to be drafting James Robinson and where are you comfortable pulling the trigger? Because after the injury to Travis Etienne with him being out for the whole season, there's a pretty solid chance that Travis Etienne could finish as a top 20 running back there could be a case where he finishes as a top 12 running back as well. Now, if you guys watched my video from last night where I broke down the injury to Travis Etienne and talked about James Robinson, I personally believe that maybe James Robinson won't have that top 12 pizzazz he had last season because of the fact that Urban Meyer is kind of a fucking idiot, if I'm being honest with you, and I believe he will use Carlos Hyde enough to kind of screw James Robinson out of being that top 12 running back. But in the same way, he should still easily finish as a top 24 running back, and I would easily have him ranked inside of my top 18 at the running back position, so I'd be very eager to really figure out where he's going to end up going in these drafts, and I want to know where you guys are comfortable picking James Robinson right now. So the first pick of this draft is Christian McCaffrey. We're at the number two overall spot, and to me, it is a no-brainer to go with Dalvin Cook. Basically, every single draft begins with Christian McCaffrey as the number one overall pick. Most drafts also, the second overall pick is going to be Dalvin Cook running back of the Minnesota Vikings. I believe that Dalvin Cook is a very solid pick at the number two overall spot. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm not really looking for any other running back. While I do understand that there is certainly risk with Dalvin Cook because he could re-aggravate that injury that has seemed to be lingering in his career. When this guy is healthy, he is one of the only running backs in fantasy football who can rival the amount of production that Christian McCaffrey puts in game in and game out. So I think Dalvin Cook is a very solid pick here at the 102. So after we go with Dalvin Cook, a bunch of players are going to come off the board. So I'm very interested to see how the first round ends up panning out in this mock draft. After we went with Dalvin Cook, came Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, Travis, Kelsey, Ezekiel, Elliott, Devontae, Adams, Tyreek Hill and Austin Eckler. So in every single draft you're going to be doing, the first round is going to be overwhelmed by the running back position. In this draft, we see Travis Kelsey, Devontae Adams, and Tyreek Hill, three non-running backs going inside of the first round. Now on ESPN, when you guys are drafting, you're going to notice that Travis Kelsey gets picked inside of the top six, the top eight, basically every single draft because on their platform he is ranked much higher than he is ranked on say NFL or Yahoo and that is going to lead the majority of players to be worried about hey maybe I want Travis Kelsey to potentially fall to me inside the second round or maybe I want to go running back here that would be my normal thought process but hey ESPN is Travis Kelsey ranked as the fourth fifth highest player so I need to go ahead and select him that's how a lot of people's brains work in these drafts so that's why Travis Kelsey goes so high am I fine taking Travis Kelsey at the 107 
106 if i'm being honest with you probably not because i'd much prefer to secure a running back if i'm one of those early on picks in the draft at pick number six so after kelsey ezekiel elliott Devonte, adams tyreek hill and austin eckler the second round begins with aaron jones jonathan taylor nine inch nicholas chubb Najee harris stefan diggs deandre hopkins dk metcalf and patrick mahomes so in every draft the quarterback position is going to come off the board at a different time in some drafts Pat Mahomes may be the first pick in the draft. Is that very likely? No, but what I'm saying is that in some leagues, Patrick Mahomes could go in the first round. Other leagues, you see him fall all the way until the fifth round. Now, my kind of standpoint on this is I don't like to go quarterback super early in the draft. In the fifth round, I'm definitely fine pulling the trigger on a guy like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, who could be there. But in the second round, the third round, the fourth round, where I see Patrick Mahomes go a lot of the time, I am not going to be one of those people that is going to select him because I believe at least early on, here, especially in the second round, you want to be building this running back depth. You want to be getting this starting running back onto your team. Sure, you have Alvin Kamara, but now your running back two is going to be significantly worse because you took Patrick Mahomes here at the 208. And say they go with a wide receiver in the third round, the running back is going to continue to fall down, and you're not going to have as great of a core, in my opinion, as if you drafted maybe two running backs early, or if you went with one running back, then you go wide receiver, then you hop back on the running back train inside the third round that's kind of why I'm up against Patrick Mahomes as well as the fact that there's a pretty solid chance that Josh Allen Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, even Dak Prescott could outscore Patrick Mahomes and likely you're going to get one of those guys at a round or two discount, maybe even a three round discount at this point when someone take, takes Patrick Mahomes so early on in the draft. So we're back up on the board here. We have Dalvin Cook already. Again, if you're the number two overall pick in your draft, you can basically know 100% that you're going to be getting Dalvin Cook because Christian McCaffrey comes off the board at the 101 basically every single time. So we're back up on the board here. Look Looking at running backs, we see Antonio Gibson, Joe Mixon, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, DeAndre Swift, Chris Carson, Dave Montgomery, J.K. Dobbins, and Fantasy Pros right now has James Robinson ranked as running back number 19. While I think I would have him ranked slightly higher, I think that is a very, very fair price to be paying for James Robinson at this point. So I'd be interested to see where he goes in this draft. If he falls to us inside the fourth round, I'm basically going to take him there every single time so we're back up on the board here again like I said we have Dalvin Cook already and to me since we already have Dalvin Cook I'm fine at the running back position so I want to get at least one wide receiver in this two three round turn that we have right here and we're gonna go ahead and get Calvin Ridley Calvin Ridley I know I take him in all of these mock drafts but this guy is severely underrated in Atlanta without Julio Jones with Julio Jones say Julio Jones was still the wide receiver in a the Atlanta Falcons, I'm still fucking drafting Calvin Ridley. You want to know why? Because with Julio, without Julio, Calvin Ridley still performs to a very, very high level. Now without Julio, I understand that Kyle Pitts is going to be there and soak up some targets, but there is no way that he is going to be soaking up near, at least in my opinion, near as many targets as a guy like Julio Jones be receiving in an offense. So I think Calvin Ridley is going to be peppered with targets this season. And the defense there is pretty bad. This is a team that typically throws the ball at a very, very high rate year in and year out. And I expect that to be no different in 2021. Calvin Ridley is going to be a target monster in 2021. After Calvin Ridley came Antonio Gibson, followed by A.J. Brown. Now, I'm not necessarily on the Antonio Gibson train like I was earlier on in the offseason, but I do definitely see a lot of upside there. Kyle Allen, their second, third string quarterback on the Washington football team compared Antonio Gibson to Christian McCaffrey. And while maybe he does have the receiving skill set of a guy like Christian McCaffrey, I'm not too sure if we're going to fully see that occur this season because Riverboat Ron Rivera, the head coach of the Washington football team, continues to kind of stand by using J.D. McKissick in that third down role, which obviously takes away some upside from Antonio Gibson, but I'm definitely fine taking him at the end of the second round. So we're back up on the board here, and I want to go ahead and get another running back. And the question here is who do we take Joe Mixon, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, DeAndre Swift. To me, I want to go ahead and get Joe Mixon. Now, I am someone who last season was beating the drum aggressively for Joe Mixon, standing on top of a mountaintop, screaming the praises, singing the praises of Joe Mixon. And obviously, it did not end up end up going my way. He did not finish anywhere near where I thought he would, but he did end up getting hurt last season. So the question is, can he finally 
have the year that people have been clamoring for him to have over the past couple of seasons. I believe that Joe Mixon is a very talented running back who, if is given the receiving work that he deserves in this offense, which I believe he may actually get this season, could finish easily as a top 12 running back. So I'm going to take him at this spot. If you are trying to maybe be even less risky here, because I don't believe Joe Mixon is a huge risk, but early on in drafts, I really advocate for being as risk averse as possible. Early on in your fantasy football drafts, you really can't win the league in the first couple of rounds, right? But you can certainly take your team and throw it and turn it upside down like you're the fresh prince of fucking Bel Air and end up ruining your team by reaching on picks and taking very risky selections. To me, Joe Mixon isn't a super big risk because if he's healthy, he should be able to finish as at least a top 16, top 18 running back, getting him here inside of the third round. I'm, I'm definitely willing to take the risk for a running back that I really do believe could be very good if the Bengals are able to run the ball as well as if the Bengals are able to actually develop a game plan to dump the fucking ball off to Joe Mixon because he is very, very solid in space. I like Joe Mixon here inside of the third round. If you wanted to be a little bit safer, you could have easily just went Justin Jefferson or Keenan Allen, any of those wide receivers that were available right there if you wanted to be extra safe. So after we went ahead and drafted Joe Mixon, came Justin Jefferson, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Darren Waller, Keenan Allen, George Kittle, me Timbers, Terry McLaurin, Josh Allen in the third round, and the third round ends with Allen Robinson. So Mahomes goes at the 208, and we see Josh Allen go at the 309. So this is basically exactly what I'm talking about. While at the 409 where I'm sitting right now, I won't be able to get Patrick Mahomes, and I won't be able to get Josh Allen. I really do believe that Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, or Dak Prescott could be the number one overall quarterback in fantasy football, and I was able to already get two running backs and a wide receiver that I really like. So personally, I would much rather have that competent running back core with that one wide receiver that I believe could be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football with the quarterback that I think could finish as the number one overall guy over Patrick Mahomes with that kind of a build. Now, the Pat Mahomes, Alvin Kamara, Justin Jefferson, Chris Carson team, in my opinion, is really fucking good, but I still really would not be wanting to pay the price for Patrick Mahomes there. As we stand here inside the fourth round, I'm probably not going to go quarterback, but in the fifth round, I definitely will consider it. So we're back up on the board here looking at running backs would be jk dobbins james robinson darrell henderson josh jacobs mike davis kareem hunt and miles gaskin looking wide receiver chris godwin cooper cup dj moore julio jones tight end DJ, tj hawkinson mark andrews kyle pitts now at tight end in my opinion those big three tight ends travis kelsey darren waller and george kittle once they're off the board i'm typically waiting until like the fifth or the sixth round and then hoping tj hawkinson falls to be there philosophy on drafting quarterbacks and tight ends is very similar if i don't get one of those top tier guys then i'm just waiting till the end of the draft to hunt for that high upside quarterback that high upside tight end now obviously there's going to be leagues and mock drafts you guys will see on this channel where i take maybe justin herbert the pervert in the eighth round or aaron Rodgers in the eighth round because the value fell to me there with that quarterback but if the value isn't there i'm fine waiting for a guy like ryan Tannehill, tom brady matthew stafford joe burrow to fall my way inside of these drafts so we're back up on the board like i said inside the fourth round we already have two running backs and one wide receiver but i'm not in love with with this range of wide receiver. I don't really like Chris Godwin. I don't really like Cooper. Well, I do like Cooper Cup, if I'm being honest with you. I like Julio Jones a lot, but I want to go ahead in this video and really talk about a strategy where you load up on running backs very early on here. I like to do every mock draft a little bit differently. In the recent mock drafts, I've been really going wide receiver early on. So here, we're going to kind of take a different approach and go with a running back here inside the fourth round to really get a star-studded running back crew, in my opinion. So looking at the running backs, like I said, Dobbins, Robinson, Darrell Henderson. Now right here, between Dobbins and James Robinson is probably going to be a very, very difficult discussion that a lot of people are going to be having in drafts because J.K. Dobbins, obviously on one of the most run-heavy teams in the NFL, should be the clear running back one on the team with some receiving upside that has been talked up out of camp. But in the second preseason game, we saw Gus Edwards out snap J.K. Dobbins, and J.K. Dobbins was listed as the starter. And then there's James Robinson, top 12 running back of last season, fantasy football darling, who played amazing last year. But now Urban Meyer, that bozo, is the head coach. 
Now, Carlos Hyde is there who could potentially soak up some of these targets, soak up some of that third down work to where we don't see James Robinson be a full workhorse running back. So the question here is you really have to pick your poison. And to me, for this video, we're going to lean with James Robinson. But I think a lot of the time I would probably lean with J.K. Dobbins. I'm not someone who is going to stand here and really tell you to overreact to week two of the preseason because would I be surprised if week number one of the NFL season J.K. Dobbins dominates the snap share of this team over Gus Edwards? No, I wouldn't because that's what I believe is going to happen. But right now, the hot topic in fantasy football is James Robinson, so I want to talk about him a lot. While I believe that Carlos Hyde could suck up some of the upside, there is still a chance that maybe Urban Meyer has an epiphany and he realizes that hey maybe I do need to feed James Robinson the rock because of how good he is as a real running back the players voted him in to the top 100 players in 2021 I don't really listen too much to the top 100 player list because in reality it's a bunch of fucking bullshit because the players just vote for their teammates and that's how people end up in the list but I do think James Robinson is a very talented player so we're gonna lean him inside the fourth round I'm gonna be honest with you guys though I think his 80 P may end up being way too high. And I'm curious to see it in the next couple of days, how it really shapes up. Because if I'm going to be honest with you, we saw what Robinson did last season. People are really going to bet on him doing the exact same thing, but they don't really understand the fact that Carlos Hyde being there is definitely going to damper James Robinson, at least at the beginning of the season. It's probably going to tell us that we reached on James Robinson. Yeah, there was an 89% chance he would have been available in the next round, but that's because ESPN hasn't accounted just yet for the fact that Travis Etienne is hurt. Obviously, sucks when Travis Etienne gets hurt because while he wasn't someone I was looking to draft at all, Ended up drafting him in, I believe it was either the 8th or the ninth round of my draft the other night that I did a video on yesterday, so you guys can check that out. And I wasn't even excited to draft him there, but I was like, you know what? There is some upside there. Maybe he gets a lot of receiving work, and it does suck when you see, especially a rookie running back get hurt like that before the season is even ends up starting. So... If you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, typically I say this at about the 10 minute mark. We're probably pushing past 15 minutes at this point. Please make sure that if you have ended up enjoying to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button as well. I would really appreciate it. And follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. So back into it after we went James Robinson, came Kyler Murray and Adam Thielen. Now again, I am not normally someone who goes quarterback early on in drafts, but in mock drafts, you need to kind of have a different look when you're drafting every single time to try to try out these different scenarios that could unfold in your draft so that you're as ready as possible to have your actual draft. So right here, if Lamar Jackson fell to me inside the fifth round, I would be ecstatic. Now, I understand Lamar Jackson definitely had a down year in 2020 compared to 2019, but I do believe he's basically baked in to rush for over a thousand rushing yards year in and year out. If this revamped revamped you know air quotes revamped offense wide receiver core is able to help Lamar Jackson then maybe we could see him put up top three numbers maybe even the number one overall quarterback in fantasy football and a lot of that rushing upside really does help him finish very highly at the quarterback position so I'm excited to get Lamar Jackson here inside the fifth round normally I'd probably just go with a wide receiver but you got to try things out in these mock drafts or so back up on the board here inside of the sixth round but before we got to the sixth round after we went ahead and took Lamar Jackson came Chris Godwin followed by Julio Jones Tyler Lockett Josh Jacobs Cooper Cup J.K. Dobbins Maki Mock Andrews D.J. Moore T.J. Hawkinson Deontay Johnson Aaron Rodgers Brandon Ayuk T. He Higgins Jamar Chase Kyle Pitts and Odell Beckham Jr. T. He Higgins that comes from Pat Mayo, shout out to him. I always say this in these videos because that nickname is just so amazing. So, Titty Boy T. Higgins going off the board at the 605. Jamar Chase at the 606. Maybe people are starting to correct themselves and actually draft T. Higgins over Jamar Chase, which in my opinion is the better move. Jamar Chase has looked bad in preseason. He has looked bad in training camp, not able to get much separation, which is very, very bad for a rookie wide receiver. I believe the rust has really set in for the Cincinnati Bengals first round pick and do I believe he could you know shake it off yeah he probably will but it may take some time and I'm not really wanting to take that inside of the sixth round 
of the draft. So we're back up on the board. We got three running backs, one wide receiver, and one quarterback. So here, to me, it is a no-brainer to go with a wide receiver. And we're going to take Kenny Galladay. Now, I do take this guy in a lot of my mock drafts, but that's because I very heavily believe on the fact that Kenny Galladay could be a potential league-winning wide receiver inside the 6th, 7th, 8th round where he's falling in a lot of drafts. Sometimes you see him fall very, very far because of the injury, because of the fact that he's on the Giants. And I don't like Daniel Jones. I've said this for the last couple of years that I don't really believe Daniel Jones is the guy there in New York for the long time, for the long term, the franchise guy there in New York. But Kenny Galladay is one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. They backed up the Brinks truck to give this guy a fat wad of fucking cash. So I'm going to go ahead and take the wide receiver one on the Giants here in the sixth round, even if I don't trust Mr. Danny Fumbles, Danny Stumbles, Danny Dimes himself, Daniel Jones. After he went ahead and drafted Kenny Galladay, came Juju Smith-Schuster and Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton's a player that I am starting to ramp back up on now. Earlier on in the offseason, I was always on here screaming the praises of Cortland Sutton because I believe that... Obviously, he ended up getting fucking hurt last year. Didn't put up any numbers. But I think he's going to step right back into that role and play very, very good. Horse cock Drew Locke. I believe maybe he's going to have a comeback season. A, you know, just a better season than what he had last year. Very, very inconsistent. I think maybe he steps up this year. And even if he doesn't, there's still a plan B. There's a backup plan for Mr. Drew Locke. If Drew Locke ends up playing like shit, then you pull the... Uh, court on him and you bring in Mr. Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy Throws a Belt. So I think either way, Cortland Sutton should be fine. So I really like him there inside of the seventh round. So looking back at what has occurred though, I probably shouldn't have taken Lamar Jackson because realistically, Dak Prescott is available in the seventh round, but Aaron Rodgers going ahead of Dak Prescott is, in my opinion, at least pretty unlikely. But with Dak's health issues, maybe that is going to happen a lot more in draft. So we're back up on the board here. We got two wide receivers, three running backs, and a quarterback at this point. When we are sitting at this point in the draft, you know how I was talking about the tight end dead zone? That's what we have entered right now. Noah Fant, Dallas Godert, Logan Thomas, Robert Tunyon. Unless any of those guys fall, I'm not trying to take them in the seventh round. I'd much rather wait and get a guy like Irv Smith on my team, who I believe could be a top five tight end in 2021 so here we're probably going to hop back onto potentially the running back train unless i like the wide receivers available chase claypool robbie anderson tyler yeah boyd and jerry judy i like jerry judy a lot but the problem is here a lot of these running backs are going to fly off the board that i really like darrell henderson mike davis as well as miles gaskin darrell henderson dodges that injury it seems like hey maybe he's going to miss some time with this injury it just ends up being a small sprain should be good to go for week number one as long as they don't bring bring anyone in knock on wood i really as someone who has drafted darrell henderson and as someone who's hammering darrell henderson in these best ball drafts i hope that they don't add anyone, it doesn't seem like they will. So Darrell Henderson is smooth sailing right now, which is very, very good for me as someone who really likes Darrell Henderson in 2021. But here, we are going to go ahead and get Jerry Judy potentially. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get Jerry Judy because I think the upside here is immense. I mean, Drew Locke has looked really, really good in preseason. Teddy Bridgewater has looked good as well. And if Jerry Judy steps into form this season and actually becomes the wide receiver he was drafted to be and doesn't drop passes like last season and just looks overall like a much better wide receiver, I think his value here inside the seventh round is very, very solid. So after we went ahead and got Jerry Judy, came Darrell Henderson, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, the pervert, Robert, or Robbie Anderson, I should say, Brandon Cooks, Ryan Tannehill, the eighth round begins with Mike Davis, Chase Edmonds, Will Fuller, Kareem Hunt, Tampa Bay defense, Javante Williams, Miles Gaskin, and Michael Thomas. Now, I have made jokes on my channel about how, hey, I'd rather try to fight a dinosaur with a pistol than draft this player. I would rather take on a lion with my hands tied behind my back and my eyes closed than draft this player. But Chase Edmonds is one of those players that fits that scenario perfectly. I would rather just go ahead and run around a room filled with people 
who are serial killers with my eyes closed, with my feet bound together, then draft Chase Edmonds. You want to know why? Because to me, at least in that chance, maybe I'll live. Here, I'm not winning my fantasy league drafting Chase fucking Edmonds inside of the eighth round. You don't know why I'm not going to win my league with Chase Edmonds? Because Chase Edmonds provides zero goal line work. This dude basically never does anything on the goal line, never gets any goal line touches. If James Conner is able to stay healthy, to me, this is a situation where James Conner could easily beat out Chase Edmonds. He could. And I'm going to take my shot running away from those serial killers before I go ahead and draft a guy like Chase Edmonds inside of the eighth round. Michael Thomas in the eighth, a little bit of a reach. I think you can wait a little bit longer to get Michael Thomas, but I do kind of understand the upside that comes with it because once he becomes the guy a couple of, maybe not a couple of weeks in the season, but like halfway through the season, then he could be really, really good based upon how Jameis has been looking. So we're back up on the board here, probably going to hammer heavily onto the wide receiver position because I'm very confident with the running backs we have thus far. Maybe I want to go Damian Harris here, but if I'm being honest with you, I think we could wait until the next round. Maybe he will be there. So looking at wide receivers, we got Tyler Boyd, Debo Samuel, DJ Chark, Devontae Smith, Antonio Brown, Jarvis Landry, and Corey Davis. I think Corey Davis's ADP is going to start rising rampantly. Now, the reason I feel this way is because Davis looked really good in that preseason game. In both the preseason games, Zach Wilson has targeted this guy at an ultra high rate. While I still like Elijah Moore, it appears that Corey Davis may win the job as the number one target by Zach Wilson. I don't think you need to take him here, but he's definitely a very solid pick inside the ninth or 10th round. But on a lot of drafts, he falls way past that. He is an excellent value. So we're on the board here looking at the wide receivers. I like Devontae Smith, but I'm being honest with you guys. I don't know if I want to take any of these guys here. I think I'd rather take Damian Harris and then really just hammer in on wide receivers after that. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, I know a lot of people aren't on the Damian Harris train with me because they think Ramadre Stevenson is going to be ultra involved all this. Based on what I've seen, Damian Harris looks good enough to be the starting running back on this team. And once Mac Jones takes over, if he takes over, then man, Damian Harris's upside is even higher because then he's not going to be getting vultured by the quarterback, obviously, with Cam Newton. That is going to be the case. I like Damian Harris a lot here later on in the draft, so I'm excited to get him here inside of the eighth round. But now, we definitely need to look to hammer in on the wide receivers. After we went ahead and selected Damian Harris, came Devontae Smith, followed by LaVishka Chenault. So we're back up on the board here, and I do like Tyler Boyd a decent amount. I talked about him as a league-winning wide receiver because while he's not T. Higgins, while he's not Jamar Chase, who most people really prioritize over Tyler Boyd, he is still a solid option, maybe even will be the number two option if Jamar Chase continues to have dropitis and not be able to get open at all, then maybe Tyler Boyd becomes the number two guy, and he is going to be passed the ball to a lot, because the Bengals are going to have to throw the ball a million fucking times every single game. They're like the Dallas Cowboys of the AFC. I've made this statement a lot. And the reason why I say this is because Joe Burrow was passing the ball at an unprecedented rate last year when he was healthy. If the thing, if that kind of trend continues, then we could see Tyler Boyd be very, very solid this season, even if Jamar Chase and T. Higgins end up having a solid year. So I understand maybe you don't want to take the wide receiver three on a team. Maybe you'd rather lean Debo Samuel. I understand that. Maybe you want DJ Chark, who you believe could be be the wide receiver one and honestly since I've taken Tyler Boyd in a bunch of these mock drafts we're gonna spice it up here and go with DJ Chark I personally believe the best bet to be the wide receiver one on the Jaguars is Marvin Jones but DJ Chark hasn't been healthy recently he had that injury to his hand so he's been missing some time maybe DJ Chark in the regular season is the number one target there in Jacksonville. LaVishka went ahead of him, so I'm fine paying the price here in the ninth round for DJ Chark. I was just really against drafting him in like the sixth round where he was going a little bit earlier on in the offseason. So after we went ahead and got Mr. DJ Chark, do 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 baby Chark, Tyler Boyd came off the board, followed by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, Raheem Mostert, Leonard Fournette, Uncle Lenny, the Ravens defense, Michael Gallup, Washington football team, Debo, Samuel, Melvin Gordon, Kenyon Drake, Jarvis Landry, Antonio Brown, Zach Moss, Jalen Waddle, Curtis Samuel, and 
Hollywood Brown. So right now, running back, we have Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon, James Robinson, and Damian Harris. So we have one, two, three, four running backs. Right now, we got Calvin Ridley, Kenny Galladay, Jerry Judy, and DJ Chark. So we got four running backs and four wide receivers. Now, a good rule of thumb for fantasy football, which I talk about in every mock draft, which you don't even have to follow to a T, is to get more running backs than wide receivers on your roster. Because it's very likely that at any given week throughout the season, if you need, say, a starting wide wide receiver to just throw into your lineup off the waiver wire, it's going to be pretty easy to find that, especially in a 10-team league. But at running back, unless there is an injury and someone doesn't have the handcuff to that running back, it is going to be very difficult to just find a running back you can throw in there to be a running back to week in, week out. And at wide receiver, it's very easy because there's more wide receivers playing every single game when compared to the running back position. So we're back up on the board here. That's why I really like to go with a lot of running backs. We're back up on the board here. And to me, Michael Carter just has to be a no-brainer at this point. Michael Carter should be the running back one in New York. I do not believe that Michael Carter will be the guy week number one. If I'm being honest with you, it's a really shitty bet to assume that he will be the number one running back because I think Coleman and Ty Johnson get the nod ahead of him. But I do believe that Michael Carter is going to work in practice. He's going to work during the games with those touches he gets, and he's going to perform to eventually pass up Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, LaMichael P. Ryan, all these guys who are career backups. Michael Carter is going to be a starter at the NFL level. I understand that it is definitely a risk because there is right now, if you look at a depth chart, he's probably listed as the running back four, but I believe he could be the guy in New York and eventually will be this season. Trey Sermon is also a solid pick at this spot. I haven't even picked him in any of these mock drafts, and one of the best sayings in fantasy football is to just make sure it's to diversify the revenue. Nick Ercolano used to always talk about this, but what that really means is to say you're playing in like five, ten leagues, right? You may want to draft other players inside of the 10th round every single time. While you may love Michael Carter, I would say drafting him in five out of five leagues, you're basically fucking yourself if Michael Carter ends up sucking. So I'd rather go ahead and take another running back at this spot. We're going to go with Trey Sermon, who definitely is the running back two on this team behind Raheem Mostert. But if Mostert was to get injured or that Mostert doesn't end up performing, then he could easily surpass him on the depth chart. And with how the San Francisco 49ers team does the running back core, where they use so many running backs game in and game out. Trey Sermon will certainly be given the chance, and if he becomes the hot hand on this team, he could really be a top 12 running back weekend and week out. And this also opens the door for us to pick Corey Davis. And the reason why I say that is because if I'm being honest with you, I don't really want to stack players on the Jets. I do think the Jets will be a lot better, but there's obviously a chance that maybe it's the same old Jets. Maybe it is. I don't think it will be with Salah as the head coach, but you never know with the Jets. So I'm going to go ahead and move myself onto the right of the screen. We just went on a nice flight right there as I did like a fucking kick flip in the air to get myself onto the right side of the screen. I apologize for blocking a bit of the right of the screen, but I think it would be preferred to see more of the roster, at least I think. Let me know down below in the comments. So here we're going to go ahead and get Corey Davis, wide receiver of the New York Football Jets. Like I said earlier, this guy is getting fucking peppered in preseason. Four of six targets for 70 yards in the win over the Packers. This guy should be the number one target by Zach Wilson. And even if it's Zach Wilson as the quarterback, who I don't expect to have some record-breaking rookie season, I think he'll be just about all right. That's enough value, in my opinion, inside of the 12th round. So after we went ahead and drafted Corey Davis, we can see that Logan Thomas came off the board, followed by Noah Fant, Buffalo Bills defense, Marvin Jones, James Conner, Henry Ruggs, Mike Williams, Devontae Parker, Dallas Goder, Ronald Jones, Robert Tunyon, Cole Beasley, Jamal with two A's, Williams, Philip Lindsay, Naheem Hines, and the LA Rams defense. So we're back up on the board here. Probably definitely going to lean with a tight end because we don't have one already. And I'm going to go with my guy Irv Smith of the Minnesota Vikings. I also do like Tyler Higby a decent amount for the LA Rams because he did have that really hot finish to the 2019 NFL season. He was on fire. He was a great fantasy football ad at that point in the season, but then things kind of went sour the next season because Gerald Everett in 2020 didn't go away. He was still involved. The reason why Tyler Higby had that big 2019 at the end of the season was because Everett ended up getting hurt or Everett, Everett, I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. 
uh, if you're watching this video, Gerald Everett, I like him as well now on Seattle, but I think that Irv Smith here would be my lean for the Minnesota Vikings with Kyle Rudolph out last season. Irv Smith really showed out, and I think in 2021 with Kyle Rudolph now in New York with the Giants, that really opens the door for a huge season for Irv Smith. So here we are back up on the board after going ahead and drafting Irv Smith. We see Mike Licky on my Gesicki on come off the board, followed by Devin Singletary. So we're back up here. We already got our starting quarterback in Lamar Jackson, who I'm very confident in. So I don't have to draft a backup quarterback. We have a tight end in Irv Smith, who I'm very confident in. Now there's also another scenario with how the draft plays out where I wait on tight end. People take backup tight ends before I get back around because there's 17 picks there in between me and my pick in the next round, and I get fucked over, right? I basically get bent over the table and fucked relentlessly by the draft, and boom, now I'm stuck with Hunter Henry, Rob Gronkowski, Gerald Everett, and I'm like, you know what? Now I'm drafting two tight ends, but that was not the case in this video. So I want to close out with a running back. David Johnson is clearly not going to be the starter there. It appears that Philip Lindsay and Mark Ingram may get the nod over him, which is a very, very tough scene, but maybe he does become the starter eventually. I don't know. My best bet on Houston is to just stay away from every single running back there. So looking at the board here, we got to go with a running back. We're going to go with Gus Bus Edwards, running back of the Baltimore Ravens. While I believe he is the clear backup on this team, we did see him get those snaps with the first team, those third down snaps heavier, or not heavier, that's not a real fucking word, but more heavily in the preseason game in week number two than J.K. Dobbins. Maybe he's more involved than we thought. So we're back up on the board here. And after we went ahead and took Gus Edwards came David Johnson, Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, Jalen Rager, Jalen Hurts, J.D. McKisson, Titties, Tony Pollard, Rob Gronkowski, James White, 49ers defense, Mecole, Hardman, Harrison Bucker, Matthew Stafford, Alexander Matthewson, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, and Latavius Murray. Now, something that I really like to preach to you guys is right now where we're sitting, the preseason's not over, training camp isn't over, to not draft a kicker or a defense. Wait until after the draft. You're going to go ahead and pick them up right before the season actually kicks off because injuries are going to happen in training camp. We've seen it already. Travis Etienne, Darrell Henderson hurt his thumb. Things happen in preseason. Things happen in training camp where players go down. So keep loading up on these extra running backs and wide receivers if your website allows it. ESPN does not allow you to do that, which is very annoying. So here we're going to go ahead and go with a running back and a wide receiver here. We're going to go with Darnell Mooney first of the Chicago Bears. I believe he's the clear number two wide receiver there in Chicago who looked very, very good last season, but his stat sheet will not tell you that because Kissing Teddy's Mitchell Trubisky, Nine Inch Nick Foles, just could not connect with him. So I think he's going to have a much better season here with Andy Dalton and eventually with Justin Fields after Mooney came, Justin Tucker the fucker, and the Broncos defense. So here we're going to go ahead and draft a running back. We're going to go ahead and get the running back of the Seattle Seahawks, the backup running back, Rashad Penny. I've never seen it happen. I don't believe this guy is ever going to be the guy in Seattle, but there is the chance that he does become the number two role there. And if Carson was to go down, that obviously has big ramifications because of how big I believe and how much I believe the Seattle Seahawks are going to rush the ball in 2021. So looking at our final roster here and make myself a little bit bigger onto the screen, we can see our final roster. Our team got an A here, which is very, very nice. We got a 95 out of 100. Our team is quarterback Lamar Jackson, running backs Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon, wide receivers Calvin Ridley and Kenny Gall. Our tight end is Irv Smith. Our flex is James Robinson. Our bench is comprised of Jerry Judy, Damian Harris, DJ Chark, Trey Sermon, Corey Davis, Gus Bus, Edwards, Darnell Mooney, and Rashad Penny. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys did end up enjoying. If you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that like button as well. Follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. Also, make sure to check out my rankings. Should be updated this morning following the injury to Travis Etienne. I love you guys. Make sure that you stay safe. As always, have a great rest of your guys' day. As always, good boy!